In the last week or so, we've seen a lot of huge advancements in open LLMs. And even though we now know that Meta probably isn't going to open source their Llama 3 400B model, we got a bit of good news today, which is Mistral dropping another model. And they didn't do it with a torrent link this time, but I'm going to take it upon myself to make a torrent of this to share it. And I can't wait to see what this model can do. I literally just saw this on Twitter, so I wanted to share some of my thoughts and share sort of the limited discourse we have so far, understanding what this model is, what it's actually good at, uh, how it compares to a number of other models, and maybe in this new era of a lot of things under 14 billion parameters being nearly as good as 70 billion parameter models back when the original Mistral 7B released, how this new Mistral 7B version 0.3 really compares. We have no evals, we just got this information, but welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So Mistral just released this, and I think the biggest sentiment of a lot of people in the open source community is a question of direction, because this week that direction might just change forever. California passed laws limiting what open source models could be released based on how much compute was used. Meta kind of got cold feet releasing Llama 3 400B open source, which might change, but probably not. And there were questions of, you know, is this era of incredibly powerful and capable open LLMs actually going to continue? And I think, you know, even without Mistral's release, that was definitely going to happen. But Mistral really gave us kind of a pick-me-up in terms of understanding what they see their future as. And this is going to be kind of interesting. The last kind of re-release of Mistral 7B V02 was an interesting one. It was clearly a very early model. It was looking at just increasing the context length. And it did give more performance, but it wasn't necessarily a quantum leap. We've also had Mistral 8x22B from Mistral, which is really still comparative to a lot of the state-of-the-art models, even if it's built differently with a mixture of experts compared to how Llama 3 is. So this model is interesting, and really at this point we're going off just what Mistral AI has told us about it on their Hugging Face page, which we'll take a look at in just a minute or so. So basically we know that this both comes in uh, an instruct and base variant. It has a 32,000 context token length. It has an extended vocabulary out to 32,768 words. It supports function calling right out of the box. And like basically all of Mistral's models, it's licensed with Apache 2.0. And the other thing here that's pretty cool is it's completely uncensored. There was a trend with some of Mistral's larger models to actually censor them or provide some kind of a safety guardrail. They've actually explored doing this a few different ways. And in theory, they claim this is completely open. So it'll be curious to see what Eric Hartford does once he starts digging into this model, which I completely expect there will be a Dolphin 2.9 variant of this. So what does the Hugging Face page actually have to say? So the Hugging Face page is pretty bare relative to a lot of previous releases from Mistral AI. Obviously, you know, it used to be the other way around where people would create the Hugging Face cards based on the torrent. And what I will say here is Mistral 7B version 0.3 is kind of sparse. Uh, they really get to the details here. So they just say, yeah, here's how you download it. Here's how you demo it. And here are some rough kind of gui guidelines for how you should use it. What is kind of cool is they actually have this kind of Mistral demo CLI uh, demo setup. I'm just using a Hugging Face inference endpoint because it's fastest and I'm actually running something on my 4090 machine right now. I also have some really cool updates coming soon with some other projects I'm working on with that with some other people that have actually been mentioned on this channel before, so very exciting stuff there. What's curious, at least with the base model, is most of what Mistral is mentioning here is that they've just increased the vocabulary length to 32,768 and they have an improved tokenizer. I think what will be interesting is to see how well the instruct variant performs and specifically how it performs relative to this base model. Because base models these days can be kind of confused and misdirected without really strong system prompts. So again, this actually uses uh, the Mistral Inference library, which is based on uh, Hugging Face Transformers. And uh, I'm sure all of you have a specific way you like to run this stuff, uh, but fortunately out of the box, we're not gonna have to wait for too much of that to be put together. And what I think is interesting here is really the only big insights we're getting from Mistral right now is its limitations. 
So they say here that the Mistral 7B V0.3 instruct model is a quick demonstration that the base model can be easily fine-tuned to achieve compelling performance. It does not have any moderation mechanisms, and we're looking forward to engaging with the community on ways to make the model finally respect guardrails. And guardrails is how they've actually implemented certain safety things like in Mistral 8 by 7B months ago. Again, they said, yeah, like we're interested in using our community to figure out how we can actually start to provide deployment environments that require moderated outputs, which I think is kind of a cool way of doing this. It shows they trust their community that's fine tuning this. It shows that they're, they don't really see that as a valid use of their time, which I think is pretty valid. And obviously Mistral isn't meta, so they don't actually have uh, huge strings attached or risk calculus attached to certain decisions they make when they release these models. Now, obviously the instruct page is pretty simple. I mean, it's pretty similar. Uh, there's a little bit more done here. For instance, it supports their V3 tokenizer, and obviously only the uh, in the instruct model supports function calling just because it's put together slightly differently. They also have some examples of function calling here, which I'm going to do later. Right now, I'm just going to show you guys the base model, and I might do a live stream later tonight showing some of this as well. And they also mentioned the same sort of rough limitations here. So let me know if you guys want me to fine tune this in a specific way. That would actually be really helpful for that future video that's coming out. And fortunately, since it's a 7B model, I think it'll be something that's actually pretty easy for me to do. One thing that I'm kind of curious of is if this model is just kind of like a run of the mill 7B model, like we would expect performance wise from a few months ago, or if really some changes have been made under the hood, it wouldn't really matter either way. But especially with the release of Phi 3, it'll be curious to see how the performance might differ once we get evals relative to things like Llama 3 8B and even some quantized versions of that and Llama 3 70B. So I actually watched the Amazon Fallout series last week and I'm kind of into that lately. So we're going to use some Wastelander kind of Fallout inspired prompts here. So the first one I want to try, which is actually one of the examples from Hugging Face, so maybe the Mistral guys like this too, is uh, this is the test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. So we're pretty much just going to see what this spits out and what we get. It's a base model, so this might be kind of all over the place, but let's see. And predictably, it's kind of all over the place. So let me try another one, and we'll see if maybe they trained any of Mistral 7B V03 on the Fallout 3 wiki. So my prompt here is, I just entered the Capital Wasteland after emerging from Vault 101. What should I keep an eye out for? in this post-nuclear war environment. And we'll see if it understands that this is a Fallout reference. It's probably not going to, but let's see. So it looks like it understands what Fallout 3 is, because it says the Capital Wasteland is a dangerous place. You'll need to be on your toes to survive. Here are a few things to keep an eye out for. Radiation, mutants, super mutants, death clouds. Okay, so it turns out that Mistral 7B is also a fan of Fallout Three, or at least Fallout. Capital Wasteland all, obviously means Washington, D.C., which is where Fallout 3 is initially set. And what's cool is it's still going. So power armor, mines, robots, raiders, ghouls. So this is pretty cool. So now that I know this works, I'm actually, for my pros test, I'm going to have it write some interesting um, plot points or just write something about Fallout. This is pretty cool. Okay, and actually it definitely has probably been trained on the Fallout 3 wiki because it's getting into some very distinct minutia about Fallout 3. And wow, it's pretty cool. I was not expecting this. It makes sense that it's a big existing data set, but clearly it was used if it's going in this far. I, and I've actually had Llama 3 fail at this. So it, it, this is definitely a deliberate choice from someone at Mistral somewhere in there. And it's just, it's still going here. So it, the, curiously, this is not really a prose, right? Like it's just giving us a massive list of everything that might be dangerous. But I think we can say it passed this test with uh, flying colors. So really, it, it was going for a while there. And I think we can definitely agree that we're getting the full value out of that 32,000 token context window, which is pretty cool. So really, uh, clearly, it understands what we were asking. It understands that Fallout is clearly. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, we're going we're gonna to start with something a bit different. So again, I just entered the Capital Wasteland after emerging from Vault 101. Write a story about a new wastelander who decides to attempt to join the Brotherhood of Steel. All right, so I just read that in, and here we go. So it, we gave it a bit more context and made it a bit less vague, and it looks like this is working well. And just got hung up again. Interesting. 
Okay, so we got started. We got I was born in a vault. I was born in Vault 101. I was a child when the bombs fell. I was a child when the vault was open. I was a child when I was sent out to the wasteland. Okay, and then it got hung up on. Uh, I was a child, but I was told to find a place to live, and that was kind of all we got for a bit. So interesting. Okay, so this model clearly I think needs to be fine tuned maybe more than we thought. I'm going to try some really basic programming questions, and then uh, later today I'm going to release some videos and be using the instruct model, which I believe will be much more usable. What's cool is, you know, so look, I understand this is probably a little disappointing. Some of the stuff we've gotten has been great, but with a really raw base model like this, a lot of times fine-tuning is actually quite a bit easier. So I'm really eager to get this other workload finished on my 4090 machine and then get into really fine-tuning this model and messing around with some of the function calling that can happen in the instruct model. So let's see here. So now I'm going to try some of my basic programming questions. Um, I'm not going to do like the snake game ones because I just don't think those are very impressive. Uh, there are enough of those on the internet, you can just copy them outright. So I'm just going to say, um, write a Python function that can give me the factorial of a given input number. So super simple, no reason this should be really that hard to do. Let's see what we get. Okay, so that did not give us code. It's just giving us a bunch of new lines, interesting. So this is definitely one of the more raw base models I have worked with. Let me do some digging on the instruct model and I'll get kind of a follow-up out later tonight. But I'm really curious what you guys want me to fine tune this to be. Do you want me to fine tune this to be kind of a role-playing um, Wastelander assistant for Fallout 3? Do you want me to use uh, just YouTube titles to create a model that I'll open source that will generate really great YouTube channels in the theme of maybe your favorite channels? Let me know what you think. Uh, as always, I hope you learned something in this video. I'm really excited to see what this new Mistral model can enable, especially once we see evals. So as always, if you learned something from this video and you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.